Good morning, fam. It's a modern day caveman again. So yesterday, I told you guys a prison story, right? And and it's been vexing my my spirit because I don't want to just glorify the bad part of prison. So I want to tell you a story that's a good story about prison. You know. There's a lot of old guys or sick guys that are in prison, like I'm talking about uh, physically sick. And the, the, the last prison that I got released from was a medical prison and it was called Franklin Medical Center. And it was separated into two parts. One half was the general population where like it was just a, you know, a regular prison. It was a camp, but it was still a regular prison. It was everybody there was basically healthy. Then the other part was a hospital, which is, uh, it was like a hub at a hospital. It's where all the, the, the terminally ill and seriously ill patients go throughout the state of Ohio. If they're not in OSU hospital, they're at Franklin Medical Center. So Franklin Medical Center has a, and that was zone A and zone B. Zone B is, is the general population. Zone A is the regular, uh, the hospital. So, the patients on zone A, on two and three, on, on floors two and three, are all basically long care prisons, long term care prisons. And these guys, these guys, they, they, uh, they're sick, they're sick. So one of the things that I did is, the program that Franklin Medical Center had was called the Stevens Ministry. And uh, the Stevens Ministry is a certified ministry that offers comfort, care, and companionship to um, patients, you know, to people. It doesn't just necessarily uh, apply to just prisons. It was like we, we are certified. We actually have to go through 50 hours of training, and it's, it's a whole course that we actually certified. We're some certified Stevens minister, so we can it can be applied out here in the world. And if you don't know what a Stevens minister is, I, I ask you to just look it up and you'll see that it's like, it's a heck of a program. So one of the things that I did was as a Stevens minister, I, I got the opportunity to leave the prison that I was in. And that's actually, it's two, just so you know, it's two different prisons and it's like high security uh, prisoners, inmates on, on the zone A side, on the hospital side. And, and it's a whole separate prison, but it's still part of the complex. So I was allowed to, to go over to the, to the other prison. I had the privilege of being able to leave my prison and go over to the other prison and sit with patients that, that were ailing or, you know, there are a lot of elderly guys, you know, and um, so we set up a program to where when someone was, when someone was passing, there would be a patient that was passing and they might not have had any family and you know they had been incarcerated for years and, and so they're on their last their last few few days or maybe a few hours they would call the Stevens ministry and, and we would go over and sit with the guys so they would not be alone and we would pray with them and talk to them and just you know, offer a little creature comforts, like maybe put some lotion on their hands, or you know, just um, read to them, or, or you know, play some music, or just just basically just be there, be a presence, so they won't they won't be alone when they do pass. And then some patients do have family members that come, and they need um, consolation, and, and like we'll pray for them, and we'll pray with them, we'll sit with them, we'll explain to them what's going on, we answer questions about the prison system and just what's going on in general. Then we had another program that where we went over, like I was actually the prototype that we, I set up the, the, the way that we could just go over and spend the whole day on the ward. And what we would do, like what I would do, so they, they doing it now, so I say we, but I, when I started it was just me. So my job was to go over to the hospital and spend time with the patients. So I would like, I would play games with them because some of them couldn't, they couldn't, uh, they, their hands wasn't functioning. And so I would like, they, they had trouble like shuffling cards or, or doing different things. So I would shuffle the cards and deal for them. Or I would sit with them and I would read to them or 
I would just sit down and be companions to him and just talk to him. And I, I remember one of the smartest guys that I ever met was in that hospital. His name was Stanley Penn. And that dude was a genius. Like, I just couldn't understand how smart he was because I thought I was intelligent, you know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not the average prisoner, so I was pretty intelligent. But Stanley Penn changed me. He changed me. He, I, I, one day we was having a conversation and, and, and he, we were talking about you know the, the psyche, the mental psyche, and I, you know, I know a little bit about a lot of different things. So I, you know, I have to spit something out there, thinking I was real slick. And this dude took that and dove into it and got to talking about the different parts of the brain and what each function of it was. And he, I mean, he, and he went deep, and I was like, whoa! So I, he, he knew uh, Stanley was the, the by far the smartest man I've ever met, and and I, I got to, you know, he had stage four cancer and it was attacking every organ in this body, including his skin. And and it was just, I, I sat with him, he, it took him about three months to die. And, and I was with him every step of the way to the day that he passed. And, you know, I met his family and it was, it was you know, it was all right, you know, it was cool. He, he was comfortable, he passed comfortably and he, and he wasn't alone. And so there's a couple other guys that I met you know, guys that had some heinous crimes and, and, you know, in prison, you know, we got our own set of morals and values and codes and rules. And, you know, one of those rules is like, you can't have a rape case or, or you know, a sex case or some, something like that's offensive to children or women. But as a Stevens minister, I couldn't look at them as predators or molesters or pedophiles. I couldn't, I couldn't look at them like that because we all got our sins. We're all bad. You know, the Bible says that not one of us is, is good. Like uh, our good deeds are as filthy rags to God. God's looking down on all of us because we're all terrible and we all sin. So I couldn't pass judgment on him. And, and so I didn't look at him like that. I just looked at it like, what if this was my father, right? And he was in jail and he was in the hospital and he was dying. How would I want somebody to treat him if they were there, if they could? Could they help? And I was like, yeah. So I never pass judgment on those guys, man, because everybody needs somebody. And I know that all the, the, the dirt that I did while I was in prison, I couldn't just, I, I, had to, I had to give back, man. I had like, you know, God, they say that all the hate that you have in your heart, that God replaces it with love. And I had a lot of hate, a lot of hate. And so when I gave my life to Christ and he filled it with love, I felt that I had to give it back. And so that was one of the things that I did while I was in prison is I just, I was a companion to some of these guys, man. And there were some predators in the hospital too, and they were preying on these weak guys. And like when I got there, I cleaned all of that up, man. I cleaned all of that up and all the predators, I, I got them at bay, you know, because I used to be that predator. So I was able to recognize what it was. And, so I started getting everybody, you know, what they deserve to have, man. And not, so, it, it, so I just felt good about that. I felt really good about my experience when it came to that. So I just wanted to encourage people to remember that prisoners are, are people too. You know, they even, no matter what they did, they're serving their time and, and, we just can't just look down on prisoners and be like, oh, forget him. He needs to be in prison, man. Because prison, prison is, you know, some of these guys might come out, right? And and they might be your neighbor. So you, you want you want them to be, you know, feel like they're not lost causes. That's what I thought. Because I thought I was a lost cause. I thought that I was I was unredeemable, right? But God proved me wrong, and, and I, I just want to encourage you that if you have somebody in prison or you know somebody in prison, you know, that may have done something wrong or heinous, you know, we all got our, our sins. We all got our sins, man. Just, you know, some, some of them guys in there, man, they, they need it. They need help. They need, you know, somebody to know that, that they just, that they're thought about, you know, just so send them a card. You know, if I call and check on him and see what's going on with him. And if, if not, just pray for him. You know, just 
pray for them. Because I pray for them every day. I miss those guys, man. They, they became my friends, you know, and that's when I looked at them as friends. So I just, like I said, I just want to encourage, um, don't forget the guys in prison, man. There's, you know, life goes on in prison too. Life goes on in prison. And it's a heck of a life, man, but it's still life and it's precious. So with that being said, you know, like I said, I, I didn't want to just give you negative. I want to give you positive. There's a lot of positive in prison too. It ain't all negative. It's still some positive. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and know that God loves you and so do I. Peace. One love.